Well, I think the thing that drew me to this show, to King Lear, is the language. Um, I mean, I love Shakespeare. That's, I think Shakespeare is probably half my resume, you know, so I, I've, since college, it's just been the material I've worked on the most and been drawn to the most. And then, and you know, I think what happens is once you sort of, you, you get a little, as a director, pigeonholed into the thing that people, you know, the way they know you. So I get asked to direct it a lot. Um, but I, I love his plays, and of course King Lear is arguably maybe his best play. I, I think probably many people think that, you know, it's either Hamlet or King Lear, but certainly one of the greats. So I've always been drawn to it, I've always loved it. I think, but to be very specific, I think it's, you know, Shakespeare's so amazing at writing characters that are three-dimensional, that are real people that we can understand and um, um, sympathize with. And I think he's able to make a play that is epic and political um, and yet incredibly personal and about family. And Everybody understands that. I mean, you could take this play and set it at, a, at an annual Thanksgiving dinner and we would get it. Um, families just do this. They explode. They misunderstand each other, even though they love each other. I mean, that's what this is about. And, and then yet it's also about power and uh, succession and all those things. And um, it's just one of, I, I think it has to be one of the greatest plays in the English language. So I've always, I've always been drawn to it. Uh, the challenges in this particular production have been that I'm not, you know, as a director, I haven't been completely sure of how I wanted to find my way into it uh, in terms of the storytelling and what I wanted it to look like and how to approach it. I did a workshop uh, on the play a couple of years ago and came out with probably more questions than I went in with. Um, it was with a reduced cast, six actors, and we're doing it with six actors here, so that's remained the same. Um, and just by fate, in terms of some of the actors that I know who are available for this run, uh, I ended up with all women actors, which is great. Uh, not because I wanted that to be the defining um, motif of the show or the choice about the show, but that's just what happened. And I put these six actors in a room together and we do the play. But the challenge has been in sort of me um, continuing to just um, experiment and figure out what I'm doing with it and and so I'm kind of finding my way every day rather than knowing a lot ahead of time but in a way that's also been great because I happen to have six actors and then also a group of designers and other people in the room who are willing to explore like that with me which is a gift because <laughs> you're sort of walking the tightrope of are we gonna get this thing up in time and there are people who are paying to see it but I think we're well on the way. So that's been a real challenge. And then, of course, you never really feel you have enough um, rehearsal time. And, we, you know, this is a play we could explore for a year, probably, and, and still be discovering things. So we're trying to make all the right choices that make it complete for this run in a short amount of time. But it's worth it. Yes, I think with this particular production, something the audience would want to know to enrich their experience is that I have thought about this play in two pieces. Um, I've wanted to present it in two parts, two full productions, but that give the audience different points of view. Um, and so I've planned, uh, well, this one has ended up being a, a, the shorter of the two, something that, that really focuses on the scenes that Lear is in only. So. It's not the full play. The full cutting of the play would be in the other version that I would present uh, in tandem with this that would give, I think, a much richer exploration of other points of view, possibly Kent's and Gloucester's and Regan and Goneril, maybe Edmund, uh, Edgar, but in different ways and following different paths of, of, uh, of these characters through the play, while this one we're, we're, we're doing here at BRT really focuses on 
Lear's point of view. So it's a condensed version of the script that really follows uh, Lear through, and I think it's important to know why we did that, and that's that really is why that I've planned this as a kind of a two-part event. Um, and so what ends up happening is that you're only you only as an audience know a character as much as Lear knows them. So, for example, when Lear goes out into the storm and he meets poor Tom, um, who's basically like a homeless person who he's run into and, and starts to converse with, he doesn't know that's Edgar, the son of Gloucester. Um, and so when we meet poor Tom in this version, we only know him as poor Tom. We don't, we don't know the Edgar character. We don't have that set up. We're really getting it through Lear's vision. Um, and so on and so forth. For example, Kent as well. When Kent goes in disguise, we don't know that character has gone into disguise. We just know what Lear knows and we find out in the end. So it, it, it's an interesting way to watch it because the, some of the blanks that get filled in get filled in late. And um, it's kind of cinematic in that way. I'm, so I'm hoping that that is a different kind of experience for people who, who know the show, especially. Well, I don't know yet if I can say a, my favorite part of the show, I mean, I'll say my favorite part of the script is probably the stuff that comes at the end, you know, when King Lear has has made some discoveries and found out some things that, that I think are very rich. That scene with Gloucester, when Gloucester's been blinded, is particularly beautiful. But I think about this production, this actress that's playing King Lear, Susanna Shetkowski, is probably my favorite thing. She's, um, she's giving a performance that is as good, if not better, than any Lear I've seen, and I've seen many. Um, she's brilliant. I think people should come see this if they don't know the play and if they really do know the play. I, f I feel like either way an audience will get something out of it. First of all, the language is as good as it gets, and so you, you have the experience of hearing that live coming out of the mouths of actors, which is how it was meant to be. And I think that's an experience worthwhile. Uh, you, you, you will get something out of it because it's a great, great work of writing, of literature. Um, I think hearing it with six actors, and, and especially hearing it with, a, with this particular actor playing Lear, that you're going to hear it in a way you, don't, you haven't heard it before. You'll hear things and have, there are nuances to the personality of this King Lear and why he does what he does based on this actor's performance that I think are really specific and rich, very detailed, and not like something someone's seen before. And I think that makes it worth it. And, you know, a lot of people have, have a, for a lot of people it's not easy to sit for three hours, you know, and one of the things that's nice about this version of Lear is that it's half that. And so that's not, it's not often you get to see it um, in a form that's that reduced, and yet I think it's still going to be a full, rich experience. Well, I chose to use a dramaturg here because I felt like, especially having an abbreviated amount of time to do this, that having someone else in the room who could answer questions about text and context in terms of when it was written and why it was written and what Shakespeare was doing, that that could be very helpful because we didn't have a lot of time and then we could get answers right away. Um, you know, I think dramaturgs can be very helpful when, uh, when they're answering the questions that are, you know, based on what we need um, and based on the vision of the piece, that, you know, things that are helpful, pieces of information that are helpful and that actors can use. Um, because scholarly information is very different than sort of information actors need to motivate their intention or to find why are they saying what they're saying, what are they trying to do to the other person. So I always find that when I can have a dramaturg, it can be very helpful to have that voice in the room. The job of a dramaturg varies greatly from uh, production to production. Um, in classical productions, it's often mostly the kind of work that I did for this, which is just to be a kind of 
human footnotes where if there's strange vocabulary or um, things about the historical conditions of the time that help the actors make sense of the given circumstances of a scene, right? Oh, this is a big deal for someone to say to someone in his position, you know, in the 16th century. And then to explain that in a way that helps the actors find a kind of playable contemporary analog for the sort of social thing that was happening um, that's kind of embedded in the historically strange uh, uh, parts of the text. So mostly that's what I did for this, but um, in new plays, uh, a dramaturg can have, can be a kind of editor of the theatrical event, right? So we're like a, a, a kind of a script editor might just focus on the page. The dramaturg for a new play might come in and say, oh, maybe it needs more music here, or what if you change the structure or something like that. Um, I didn't do that kind of work for this, but uh, but the, but the director and cast did. I mean, they radically uh, reordered scenes, restructured things. Um, but that that work had all taken place sort of conceptually before I came in and was refined uh, during the rehearsal process in the first week or so. I wanted to work with this company for some time. Uh, I've been. Uh, uh, a, a Bedlam fan for a number of years. I think uh, they're really one of the most exciting companies working in New York now. And I really, I think the kind of um, fluid, pared down, uh, what makes the language alive instead of like classical theater voice, uh, th these kind of core values of the company flexible staging, not getting kind of like hampered by elaborate naturalistic sets or something in a way that I think I think one of the most like magical things about this company is that like they never take on more sort of production stuff than they can just like shed in a minute of transformation. Like one of the problems that I've seen with actors playing King Lear is that they tend to kind of like, I've, I've seen a lot of actors playing this part where they tend to kind of like leap ahead into like redeemed, holy Lear who suffered so much. Like they really, it's like the whole production kind of buys into Lear as a man more sinned against than sinning. And I think that what's more interesting, what Zuzana does, and also what I think the logic of the cuts and sort of repetitions does um, is to, allow kind of continued narcissism to allow, um, you know, Lear really even at the end is kind of um, aggressive and, you know, he's not a saint. And I think that that kind of like start and stop of families hurting each other and forgiving and hurt each other and forgiving and, and that that doesn't always just kind of like <laughs> evolve into, um, you know, something kind of transcendently redemptive, but can stay uh, like stuck in a, a, a kind of emotional, replaying emotional deadlock of an old family argument. I think there's something really true about that. You know, one of the things that Eric said sort of early uh, in the rehearsal process is that like very often Lear gets done because there's like an actor of that stature whose time it is to play Lear and he goes and does like great acting and then the rest of the play kind of sits around him and that you know when you shed that and when you shed like classical theater voice and the just kind of like pathos of an old man's body exposed on stage or something like that and you just have the language and the situation, um, but as fully inhabited as Susanna does. One of the things that I think she does that's really special in this production is the storm scene, where she really allows the character, like the, the tragic vulnerability of being ridiculous, and this, I think, is so brave. For years, for like over a hundred years, people thought King Lear wasn't playable. Charles Lamb said, um, to see an old man tottering around the stage has nothing in it but what is painful and disgusting, right? 
And like very often, like I saw McKellen do this and it was amazing, but like you were still always watching a great actor with like tragic dignity of great acting. And I think what Zuzana does that's really, really humane and, and fearless is um, like she gives the, la the language in all that fullness. Like she makes the storm, like it's, it, it has that like tragic scale, but also she lets you see like an old man with like soup dribbling on his shirt. You know, there's a kind of ridiculousness in that. And actually that's how the kind of tragedy of aging unfolds. Like we don't, it's like, oh my God, dad, stop. You know, like y y you're a mess. You know, you don't, you're not always sort of in, co in command of the storm. And I think that um, the way she like takes on the scale of that language, but still allows real human like messiness in that scene is just, I've never seen anything like that.